uh, with Luma inverted matte, that's what it looks like now. And what the uh, final layer is, it's just a basically a darker color. So let's clear that. So the Luma invert inverse matte is, you know, making all the blacks transparent. So um, you would get that media look, but then there would be transparent parts through it. So I just duplicated um, the original layer and altered the color so it's a darker color and so it has that like real nice veiny look to it and uh, the next one up is the stump so I pre-composed all those three layers and so the top layer is the actual bloody part and the uh, next layer below it kinda gives you like an edge of where, where the flesh might be so you'll you'll see a lot better against the back black background but you'll have like the 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 neck open area open neck area here and then a very edge of skin so when we go back up to the teleport layer let's go over here you can see it a little bit better that nice little edge of skin and if you really want to have some fun you can you know try and put like a, a piece in there it looks like the spinal cord and, and a throat but uh, this is this is good enough and so what it is is uh, the layer that's called stump which is a stump of his neck um, I brought it all the way down so it's actually underneath uh, the background that has the uh, mask animated mask applied to it so if I had the stump above that you would have that so I'm actually using the mask that's cutting out his head around the jacket area to uh, hide some of it and it looks a little bit more realistic because the collar of his of his shirts hiding you know the stump of his neck and then what I did is uh, I made some gurgling blood uh, spewing out of his uh, out of his neck and uh, what I just did is I just used a simple simple particle playground and I just created a uh, um, uh, a solid and put a particle playground to it <sighs> don't want to use bright red I used a, a darker version of red and uh, what I did was uh, I set the animation so at uh, like four seconds five frames uh, there is zero particles per second at zero velocity and then set the keyframes the ne very next keyframe where is it I upped it to uh, um, 130 uh, for velocity and 50 for particles per second so it goes from one frame to zero to an actual number that you want and it just gives that look of just like you know, just spurting right out um, and then what I did is let me turn it off here so this is what it would look, look like originally so we have those your typical little QB thingies coming out of your particle playground so I put a fast blur on it and just a very gentle blur I think it was uh, just five on my on my fast blur to blur it up then I used a sharpen to sharpen the outlines because it was too fuzzy and the sharpen was out was was almost 200 it was 196 um, then I put another blur on it oh I'm sorry I put another sharpen on it because I wanted to sharpen those edges even more and that blur was at 106 and you're starting to get pixelation in the blood and you don't want that so um, I put another blur on it a fast blur just set it to one just to get rid of some of the pixelization <sighs> And it adds this nice little t little textured look to it. Now, for both the stump and the blood layers, what I did was is I um, brought up their positions, and I pick whipped the positions to the position of the null, which has the tracking data on it. So the body of Sam that's moving around now, the stump and the uh, uh, emission of the blood is moving around. Uh, with the body. Uh, let's see here. What else we got here? Now the only thing we have left to do. Well, if it was if it was daylight out here, you know, you would be able to see that the back of his jacket. Um, there's nothing there, so you know, honestly, we should go in and fix his jacket. But I'm not going to be too worried about that right now because what I showed you, you can use to create you know the back of the jacket which you know create a solid match the color uh, put it behind the background and background mask and just track the position to the null uh, which has the tracking data on it simple as that 
Okay, so now all we have to do is just animate the fun part. Let's see where we got here. Got the headshot. Okay, so I'm going to reshy some of my layers. So all we have to do is like do a halfway decent animation of Sam's head, you know, falling off. Uh, so let's see here. I'm going to pause again and I'm going to do a little bit of extra animation. Okay, guys, I just did a, a few little extra things here so uh, I, I can finish up really quick. <clears throat> I just did a little extra animation to, to add a little extra uh, flair to the to the little project here. So what I'm going to show you is uh, just some of the uh, problem might might occur uh, with uh, uh, like animating his head come flying off. Oh, excuse me again. Ooh. So we got his head, it goes flying off and it drops down. Whoop de do. Okay, so I want his head to go like really like spinning through the air. So we're here, and I've got my rotation open, and I add the rotation. And it doesn't quite look right because, well, if you take a look at the anchor point, is way down here, and his head's way up here. Uh, the problem is, is that um, when we apply the tracking data, the tracking uh, itself was actually down here somewhere. So what I'm going to have to do is actually move the anchor point uh, back up to the neck somewhere. So I'm going to remove all the little animations I made, uh, little little keyframes I made, and uh, make sure the headshot is selected. And up here, look at it, pan behind tool, or you can hit the Y button, um, select that. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to grab the anchor point and move it to wherever you want it. So I'm trying to think, maybe this lower center of his neck is good. And there you go, you're all set. Now we can uh, start to do the animation. So I'm going to keyframe the position and rotation. And go out here a few frames. And I'm actually just going to move him first. Whoop. Okay, what's going on here? Just make sure. Ah. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause this again because something weird's going on. Be right back. Okay, simple fix to that problem. I was basically still in my pan behind tool, which when I selected my uh, um, headshot, it was moving the image that was behind the mask. Mm. Okay, so just go back to regular select uh, selection tool. And uh, I'm you to see my keyframes and again I'm going to move Sam's head over here and a few more frames it's going to be completely out of the picture <laughs> 